Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahawashai, Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahawashai, Barakata Yahawa, Ba'ashem, Yahawashai, Ba'ashem Akakadash. Double honors and salutations to the elders and apostles and bishops of Great Mistun, to the Akim Akrath, throughout the four corners of the earth, holding on in sincerity and in truth to the gospel of the Lord Amashak Yahawashai in these days and times. This is Brahma Nasha. DC camp short lesson for the upliftment of the elect for the upliftment of the church you one question you always have to ask yourself uh, is this who are you a reflection of whose image are you a reflection of all right that's how uh, you constantly uh, remind yourself about the your daily walk in this ministry of the Lord of Mashiach, Yahweh You constantly examining yourself. You're going over the actions you've taken and you also are critiquing the results. Okay, That's a, a constant uh, review of your actions. All right, A constant review of the level of your faith. All right, You take actions today and then what happens? You see the results, all right? The result might not come immediately. You know, you might have a, a couple of uh, challenges here and there before the results come in, before the positive results come in. That's what it is, man. Just like in the market, before you make profit, you know there's an element of loss you have to prepare yourself for, all right? So in this ministry, you know you're gonna have a, a situation where it's going to have a, a negative uh, connotation, but you don't let that overrule the, the, the purpose of why the action was taken, all right? So that's exactly what the Lord has uh, made us uh, aware of, man. You know, you're going to have to deny yourself. Denying yourself in this world has a negative connotation, all right? But in the ministry, it has a positive benefit, a positive impact that you are willing to uh, land back of and uh, use to prepare yourself to the next level. That's what faith is all about, man. Faith is about denying the, the, the physical attributes of this world, but not uh, ignoring them, man. Okay? You're not ignoring them. You accept that uh, you can live without it, without certain aspects of this world. And then you can also use that uh, purpose of, uh, of denial to push yourself forward, man. In other words, you learn how to do without. Okay, that's what this ministry teaches you. Learn how to do without. Learn how to cut out the stuff that's uh, pleasant to the flesh but not necessary for the spirit, okay? So Genesis 1 and 27 says, So the Elohim created man in his own image, okay? And the image of the Elohim created he him, male and female created he them. So you have to look at the standard, all right? Just like the previous lesson I did, you have to look at the standard to which you've been uh, called to. All right, what were you called to? You know, what were you, you know, uh, made to swear on to? What covenant did you uh, take before the Heavenly Father, before the Lord, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Bashim, All right, what did you, you know, sign up for? Those are, those are the little things you have to constantly remind yourself, man. You know, that's the simplicity of this gospel. What did you sign up to do? All right. What did you sign up to do? How are you going to continue to uh, hold on to that principle, that basic principle that uh, have been made known unto you? Okay, so uh, that's just what it is. And then you go further, book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, look at verse 17. It says, "You shall diligently, ye, ye, you shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your power, and His testimonies and His statutes, which He had commanded thee." 
And that's all it is, man. You have to know exactly why these commandments are important and why you have to keep them. Okay? And his testimonies, all right, his prophecies, all right, and his statutes, right, what the Lord has told you to do. Okay, his law, statutes, and commandments and prophecies. You have to understand the value of those things that the Lord is making you to be aware of. How to connect them together and how to build on them. That's what the Lord wants you to do, man. You don't want to be ignorant of uh, your responsibilities in this ministry or of what uh, is expected of you. Okay. And then uh, verse 18 says, And thou shalt do that which is right. Do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good of the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers. Okay, that's what it is. And then the icing, well, let me not say icing on the cake, but the most important uh, observation that you also see is verse 19, to cast out all thy enemies before thee as the Lord has spoken. That's what it is, man. You know, when you begin to hold on to the principles of the Lord, you will see your enemy fall, man. When you remain steadfast and unmovable in this ministry, you will see the fall of your enemies. You will see their failure. Their failure and then their fall. You know, in fact, let me see, let me start from the basics, man. You see them being confounded. You see their failure and you will see their fall. Okay? That's how simple it is. Yeah, that's how simple it is. So you just have to learn to uh, accept, you know, the, 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 the plan of the Lord. So easy one, Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 1. Therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy power and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments all way. That's it. Whatever is hard for you, you have to observe it, man. We understand that we're in captivity, but don't make yourself over-righteous, man. You know, the Lord knows that uh, you cannot keep all the laws. Your job is to understand the value of the law. Apply the understanding to your daily growth, okay? Every law has a purpose behind it. You're supposed to understand the purpose of that law, okay? That's what it is. The spirit of understanding has to dwell with you. That's how you grow. That's how you gain the wisdom that you can share with the brotherhood. That's how you're able to ignore your feelings and teach brothers how to uh, spot an opportunity for growth. Okay? So that's what you need to be uh, accustomed to doing. Now we go to the book of Psalms, chapter 40. And uh, let's look at verse 11. Yeah, so this is a prayer. All right. A prayer, a prayer, a prayer, a prayer from our forefather, King David. All right, Psalms chapter 40, verse 11. I have not hid thy righteousness in my heart. That's verse 10. So like I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. So you have to take responsibility, all right, to uh, to take uh, action, to let the people know what the Lord expects from them, okay? I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation congregation so you have to teach the people what you've learned what the lord has taught you you have to teach them too okay that's what it, uh, it's respect of you in this ministry when you are in the position of uh, leadership okay verse 11 says withhold not thy tender mercies from me let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me so you want to be able to have a staying power in this ministry. You want to remain in this ministry. So that's why this psalm is important. You want the Lord to have mercy on you. The Lord had mercy on those that have faults. 
Okay, that's basically what it is. When you know you have faults, you pray that the Lord have mercy upon you. Okay. Yeah, you pray the Lord have mercy upon you. The Lord have mercy upon you because you know that uh, you're, you're not perfect. You know you're a sinner. So you constantly work on uh, sinning less. All right. You're working on uh, purging out the leaven that's making you to stumble and fall. You're purging out the distractions that are not necessary for your growth. Okay. So that's why you need the mercy of the Lord. Then uh, verse 12 says, For innumerable, innumerable evils have compassed me about. Mine iniquities have taken hold upon me, that so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of mine head. Therefore my heart fell it. So you understand how messed up your life is, man, and what you need to, re you know, to receive mercy. So that's just what it is, man. You know you're not perfect, but at least you're fighting, you know, for uh, that level of acceptance before the Lord. All right, you're approaching that spirit of perfection, and that's what it is, man. You acknowledge your faults and you move on. That's what the Lord wants us to do: acknowledge your faults and move on to the things that you're supposed to be doing. You do not drown in your faults, all right? You do not drown in your faults. Remember that. Do not uh, drown yourself in your faults, and then you become a, a wine bieber. You become a, a, a liability to the brotherhood, always asking for bail money, you know, always, uh, you know, misusing the, the, the blessings of the brotherhood. You know, you got to be careful, you know, that you do not become a burden to the brotherhood in this ministry. Remember that, man. You're supposed to be productive, not uh, regressive, all right? So, uh, another precept. Look at the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14 and 20. It says this, We acknowledge, O Lord, our wickedness, and the iniquity of our fathers, for we have sinned against thee. And what did we do? We, you know, hey, we messed up big time, man. So verse 21 says, Do not abhor us for their name's sake. Do not disgrace, do not disgrace the throne of thy glory. Remember, break not thy covenant with us. See, that's the mindset we're supposed to have. You're begging for mercy, man. You know, you're begging for mercy. Yeah, we're in the hands of our enemies. If we are in the hands of our enemies, why should we become our own worst enemy? Why are we completing the, the destruction of ourselves before the face of our enemies? We should be rebuilding ourselves up with uh, the principles the Lord Amashak Yahweh has given unto us, man. You know, it's so sad that our people don't understand that uh, they know they're in captivity, but they still go ahead and become uh, self-destructive, man. Instead of them building themselves up in this ministry, they, they tend to go the, the, the path of destruction, destroying their own selves and, and uh, their fellow Israelites, man. It's just it's just horrible. It's a bad feeling that uh, you don't even want to see. But, hey, it's part of prophecy, man. You know, you don't want to be the one destroying his own people and destroying them. You know, destroying himself at the same time, destroying himself at the same time. You know, that's what you call a, a detrimental uh, mindset. You know, detrimental, 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 detrimental. You don't want that spirit upon you. So, you pray that the Lord uh, gives you the opportunity to acknowledge your sins and you, and you cleanse yourself, man, with His Word. All right. So, uh, another precept. Hosea chapter 5 and uh, verse 15. What does it say? What does the Lord say? I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, will, right? In their affliction, they will seek me early. That's what the Lord wants us to do, man. You know, 
seeking his first his face before the time of judgment. Man, when you know you're a servant of the Lord and you've gone you've gone astray, and then you're able to catch yourself back, you know, you're able to receive rebuke and chasten of the Lord and you continue to do the righteous acts, you know, that's uh that's required of you. You don't get a pat on the back for uh, doing what you're supposed to do, you know. And then when the time of judgment comes, you'll be found uh, innocent of your faults. You know, you'll be spared. That's what the mercy of the Lord is all about, for you to be spared from your negative attributes, man, you know. To be spared from your infirmities. Just it's basically a, a salvage operation. You know, a salvage operation. It's like uh, you 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 know you, you picking things, you know this one well, uh seventy five percent of this is uh, all messed up, you can't use it. This one sixty percent. All right, we only want to we only want the, the you know the products that have a I'll say a minimum, you know, seventy seventy five percent uh quality. You know, uh, uh, quality uh, inspection, whatever you call it, man. Level of damage, maximum 25%. So you're basically taking 75 and up. That's all it is, man. You choose the best of the worst. That's what this ministry is all about, man. The best of the worst. You're separating the, the best of the worst from the worst. You know, that's all it is, man. That's that's how you that's how you're able to you know to uh to get the bet you know the best that you can use for the for the best for the good. That's what this ministry is all about. You finding the things that have been damaged and broken, that are repairable. All right, that the level of repair would not require that much, and that's how it is, man. Just like vehicles, man. When you know a vehicle is totaled, you can't really use it, man. You know, that that's it. You can't really drive the vehicle no more. So what what can you do? It's a it's a write off. If the vehicle have a you know bad brakes and all that stuff, you could still salvage it. If you got the missing headlights, missing a door handle, a missing bumper, you know, missing the axle, all that stuff can be replaceable. You know, so that's what it is. As long as the vehicle is not totaled, the engine is not. Uh, you know, completely destroyed, you could still salvage it. That's all it is, man. You know, that's what this ministry is all about. Salve, it's a salvage operation, all right? So, um, yeah, just go to our book of Sirach. Book of Sirach, chapter 23. You know, you have to know what uh, is necessary for you uplifting upliftment in this ministry Sirach chapter 23 now let's read verse 11 see this you have to acknowledge what you signed up for man don't take the word of the lord for granted do not make light of the lord's commandments Sirach chapter 23 verse 11 a man that useth much swearing shall be filled with iniquity and the plague shall never depart from his house. And if he shall offend, his sin shall be upon him. And if he acknowledge not his sin, he make it a double offense. And if he swear in vain, he shall not be innocent. But his house shall be full of calamities. See, so that's a warning. You know, for brothers and sisters in this ministry, man, you have to know what you are dealing with when you come to serve the Lord. All right? Do not uh, make an empty promise, man. Do not uh, make an empty vow unto the Lord and give an excuse that uh, you couldn't uh, keep the vow. All right? Just remember that, man. The world is looking for doers of the words they've heard. It's so simple, man. It's so simple. Do not make yourself a, a laughing stock in this ministry, man. Do not make yourself an obstacle to the growth of others. 
You have to be a catalyst in this ministry. Sirach 23 and 11, A man that useth much swearing shall be filled with iniquity. All right, so he's going to have fault after fault after fault after fault after fault. How many times can you see Salak here? And you still go back and create the same old problems. All right, and the plague shall never depart from his house. So if you're not in a position to do the will of the Lord, stop making excuses, man. You know, pray that the Lord give you the opportunity to be in a position to do his will. All right. So that way you would not be uh, uh, overbearing, all right? Making uh, uh, vows that you cannot keep, making promises you, you, you're not in a position to keep, all right? Do not be in a, in a haste, in a hasty spirit to alter anything before the Lord. Maintain that patience. The reason why the scripture says you have to learn to be still, learn to be patient in the spirit, all right? So it says, and if he shall offend, his sin shall be upon him. So he's going to be responsible for his faults. All right. For his transgression. All right. He's going to be held accountable for it. And if he acknowledge not his sin, he make it a double offense. So it's going to be jacked up, man. Jacked up for not following up. All right, jacked up for not following up on the vows he's made. All right, and if he swear in vain, he shall not be innocent, but his house shall be full of calamities. So, remember that, man. We're almost at the end of uh, our persecution in Babylon, of our captivity. So, you have to learn how to be focused on uh, the obligations you can accomplish. All right, do the job that you can handle. All right, seek not matters that are above thy strength. That's basically what it's telling you, okay? Yeah, do not be uh, volunteering to do things that you're not capable of doing. It's that simple, okay? So we go to the book of James. James chapter 1. 21 to uh, 25. It says, uh, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Remember that. James 1 21. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls so these are words of wisdom that you need to uh, abide by that you need to take to mind take to heart seriously on a daily basis man verse 22 but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves so you see that but be ye doers of the word, James 1 and 22, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. So remember that, man. Verse 23, for if any be hear of the word and not a doer, he is like unto to a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for, be, for he beholdeth himself and go it away, and straightway forget it what manner of man he was. So you have to understand what you have to do. You have to understand that the 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 source of where you have to emerge from. You have to come out of the 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 the, the phases of confusion, the phases of unrighteousness. You have, the Lord had to bring you out of darkness into light all right so you, you do not have to uh meddle anymore with darkness man ignorance you have to move forward all right you know exactly what you are what uh, you um struggling with so what do you do you apply corrective actions to it so the glass the mirror is the scriptures man 
this is what you look at to help you identify what uh, you're missing and what you would like to add to your life, to your spirit. You know, are you lacking in the, in the, in the department of faith? Yeah, you said for scriptures that boost your faith. Are you lacking in the position, uh, the, the the position of uh, communication? You look for uh, precepts that help you build your communication skills in the brotherhood. All right. Are you lacking in the position of uh, financial management? You look for precepts that teach you how to manage the blessings the Lord has given you. What you do in the times of adversity. All right. So that's how how you uh you, you you know you look out man for your own growth in this ministry okay yeah you know exactly the irresponsible actions you've taken in the past and what you can do to improve yourself okay and then verse twenty five says but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. All right, so you are going to be blessed. Your house will be filled with blessings instead of calamities. Okay, it's that simple and clear to understand. Now we go to our final precept in the book of Psalms, chapter 141. All right. Psalms 141, uh, verse uh, 3 and 4. See this? So uh, the point is in verse 3 and 4. I read from verse 1. Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me. Give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Verse 3. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. So you know the reason why, right? So you do not make empty promises. You do not sin with thy lips. You do not make empty vows without following through when it's time for you to take action to complete the job. Verse 4. Incline not mine heart to any evil thing, incline not my heart to any evil thing, to practice wicked works with men that walk iniquity. So do not make yourself a partner of hypocrites, man. Those that say and do not do. Remember that, man. It's so easy to find yourself among those that are just uh, for uh, showboating sake, man. You know, uh, parents only but no faith, no substance, all right? So the Lord is telling you that you have to know exactly, you know, what you're here to do. A, a, a doer of the things that were spoken, all right? A hearer of the word and a doer. Psalm 141 verse 4, Incline not my heart to do any evil thing. Incline not my heart to any evil thing, to practice wicked works with them that work iniquity so you do not want to be condemned to be in the congregation of hypocrites remember that and let me not eat of their dainties so you don't want to be uh dividing the gains or the spoils of their actions with them and you don't want to be a a, a a board member of the deception committee man the deceptive committee you don't want to have a membership card you know to that type of group that's why we have these lessons, man, to help you avoid those types of uh, individuals, man. You know, because they're always looking to deceive, to add to their numbers, so they could uh, make merchandise of people. So the, you have to know, man. So you have to know whose image are you a, a reflection of, man. It's that simple, man. This is just a short lesson. You know, just to help you uh, understand what you're exposing yourself to and that uh, you don't get yourself caught up in the snares of uh, these so-called supplanters. So, Yahabashim Ashah, Bashim Kakadash, Nabarak Tam, and uh, stay circumspect. Shalom.